Hello and welcome to Elida High School for tonight's sectional championship between the Shawnee Indians and the Elida Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Brady Overholt. And Brady, these two teams very familiar with one another from the Western Buckeye League. They have played this year during conference play, but that was a long time ago, and these teams are very different. Yeah, early on in the season, uh, they ended up uh, tying that match, and uh, yeah, we're going to have a good one somehow. Every year, uh, these two teams, either in boys or girls, they somehow end up seeing each other twice, and this is another one. Yeah, long rivalry. The, the boys' side had a great game earlier this year, the girls as well. This one will not end in a tie, though. A winner will be determined, and that winner will go home uh, the sectional champions and uh, move on to district play. Take a look at tonight's starters. Starting first for the Shawnee Indians, they are going to start number one, Cameron Morris. Uh, and goal will be number two, Chloe Nance. Number five, Bella Habitson. Number seven, Cameron Reidenauer. Number 10, Megan Carter. Number 12, Tamaya Jemai. And number 14, Addison Neff. Number 17, Chloe Cleves. Number 19, Addison DeGranit. And number 25, Adelie Stover. And finally, number 34, Bella Heil. Shawnee has the ball, going to move it up as they are going to play along the far sideline. That uh, one right on the edge goes out. First throw in goes to the Indians. Shawnee wants to play quickly. Back in, playing it at their feet. Lida quickly trying to save that one from going out. Kicks it off another Indian. Or no, that actually ends up out, Shawnee. So Elida with the throw in, going to get a chance to try to move the ball up into their side of uh, the field here early going. Yeah, we'll see both of these teams, you know, try to feel it out a little bit to begin with, and then you'll, you'll watch them both kind of settle into their game as a good shot right away comes in. and Almost a great ball played in that time, almost over the keeper's head, but off the post. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're seeing an offsides call here. Uh, actually, off that deflection, uh, a uh, Shawnee forward was still on the line, and, I mean, that's just an un 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 unlucky position in her part. Yeah, that offsides was awfully close, but the official right there calls that one, so the ball gets sent forward. He lied in the middle third of the field. Yeah, and they uh, that was about an inch lower, and we might have a 1-0 lead already for Shawnee. So. And that's kind of developed a little slow. It kind of looked like everybody was just not thinking that a shot was coming, kind of moving around. Nice job trying to get something going here early. As Last time these two played, it was ended in that 1-1 tie we talked about, so... A couple of goals here in the early going will definitely set one of these teams ahead here in the early onset. This one's going to be fed up as that one is going to be too far ahead for any of the Indians to get to. Going to lead to a goal kick for the Bulldogs. We'll take a look at tonight's starters for Elida. They are going to start number one, Brianna Patrick. Number two, Julia Thomas. Number three, Kylie Wallace. Number four, JoJo Knight. As they're still setting up the goal kick. Number five, Jelena Howard. Number eight, Katie Munson. Number nine, Carmen Blaine. Number 10, Ava Overholt. Number 15, Kelsey Wallace. Number 16, Lexi Good. And number 34, Leah Ramirez. Now working here towards this near sideline. A little dangerous spot there. You had the, uh, like the tarp that goes on there to try to protect the track in that time. Going a little bit too far out of bounds. Tamaya Jemai lost her footing slip. Looked like she's okay, though, as that one's going to be called out. It's going to stay with the Indians on the throw-in. Yeah, this field de definitely crowns it <laughs> ever since. I think the first year here, I was a senior, and it's, yeah, it just doesn't have that. They, you know, they're trying to fit that track inside there, like, or on the outside, like a lot of schools, and that, that's unfortunate for the soccer part of it. So, so Elias had to play a lot of defense here in the early going, trying to move this one up. Long kick right around midfield. It's going to get cut off by the Indians. This one's going to get sent out. Going to stay with Shawnee. Shawnee trying to move quickly on the throw in. Nice move by Jimai. Looking for the feed as she sends the cross. That one's going to be a little bit wide, just out of reach of Morris. She tracks it down. Works a one-on-one -on, -one on the far side. As they move down into the corner, she's going to pull that one back. She's trying to get the angle to try to get that cross. And nice defense by the Bulldogs. That one's going to get sent out for another throw in. Yeah, the, uh, Eli has got two girls uh, coming back from last year, starting on defense with uh, both of the, it's actually both of their outside backs. Uh, Carmen uh, Blaine's also there, and she kind of moved from the uh, holding mid spot. So, Jim I looking for the cross, 
Nothing there, sends it out. And it's gonna be deflected off of a Bulldog. So we're gonna have our first corner kick of the evening. Yeah, and so, both and both groups are pretty similar here. They kind of they they attack the way they they set things up, the way they move to the outside. I mean, you're going to see a lot from uh, from Tama and and Morris and obvious uh, Morris obviously, and then on Elida's side, it's it's a set of cousins that, that have been kind of running this whole year, and that's JoJo and uh, Lexi who's got it right now, freshman. Lexi's going to feed this one up. It's going to be a race as the keeper's going to come out and just gets it covered. So a fortunate play that time for Shawnee, and that was all off of the Addison Neff corner. Shawnee looked like they had a great opportunity in front of the Elida net, but couldn't connect. Elida tried to take advantage on the quick, fast break. They had the opportunity, but just out of reach on that feed. Here comes Jemai now. She's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. It's her and the keeper, and she squeezes it just past the right or the left hand, excuse me, of the keeper, and that ends up in the back of the net for the early one-nothing lead for the Indians. So Shawnee gets off to a fast start here as they get one in at the 35.06 mark. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. So the Tama Jemai, a goal for Shawnee, puts them on top. one nothing here in the early going. Just under five minutes here left in the first half. But, you know, Brady, you can't ask for a much better start if you're Shawnee. They have came out. They've looked like they've been a step ahead of Elida here in the early going. Well, 100% the whole, I mean, we're only less than six minutes in, and they've controlled this game as far as I'm concerned. And to be honest, they, they could easily have two, that first one. Uh, you know, that first one that just just hit the crossbar. So so Elida's definitely got to pick it up here. And, and I, I feel that's probably been the problem a lot of the year for Elida. They've, they've got a good record, but they just get in their own heads and they just don't play soccer. they got a lot of girls that have played a lot of soccer. Just, just get out there and play. Don't overthink it. Yeah, Shawnee moving a little bit quicker here in the early going. And we mentioned they, they, we missed, they missed one early with off of that uh, chip shot that went off of the post. But then that goal or the corner kick, they just missed another opportunity. So Shawnee right now uh, in firm uh, controls. We have a stoppage here. Looks like we may have an injured player. It's one of the Indians players on that far sideline. Looks like uh, Morris is actually I'm not sure what exactly happened. But, yeah, that's definitely Morris. And that's hopefully everything's okay because – She's a she's a key component of this team. Yeah, it looked like she was stretching out a little bit. Not sure if she just tightened up a little bit or what was going on with her. But in soccer, when nobody comes out to check on you, if you can get yourself right, you don't have to come out. So Morris able to stay in, and that's fortunate for Shawnee. Shawnee works in the midfield. Elida tries to cut it off. Nice use of space by the Indians. Had some pretty good passing lanes as Elida trying to get a little physical there to see if they can't get the ball back. They do get it sent back, but this one's going to roll back to the keeper harmlessly. Well, right now we haven't unfortunately mentioned JoJo Knight's name at all, number four. And if Elida's got any chance, her and her cousin Lexi, as we mentioned, 16, are going to have to really step it up. Um, they're the speed. They're 95% of the goals on this team. And uh, right now we're just I – I don't think Elida's getting any control at all in the middle. And, Obviously, Shawnee's taking advantage of that by kind of just possessing and moving the ball around. A little bit of a slip right there. Shawnee with an opportunity, or excuse me, Elida with an opportunity to see if they can take advantage. As this one's going to get sent up, Shawnee's still going to be able to maintain control. They're going to look to move quick, trying to get a run. Elida's going to be able to retreat. Shawnee moves around, sends across. This one into the middle of the field is going to get sent back by the Bulldogs. Nice hustle to save that one. Now, they, here comes the whistle, so it is going to be a throw in. Thought she might have just gotten to that one to keep it from going out. Shawnee, number 11, Riley Smith. So, with a substitution, Riley Smith, one of the captains of this team, checking in. And the Indians continuing to put that pressure on. And we're going to have another offside call but on Shawnee. Yeah, that, was, that one was close. Just maybe about a, not even a yard, so. So 
So it looks like Eli is setting up here, and they just need to kind of, kind of get themselves uh, in, in, a, in a little bit of a game mode here and, and get back in here because, as we've mentioned a few times, it's pretty much been controlled by Shawnee thus far. So Morris moves this one up. As this one is going to roll out off that far side. This one's going to go back to Elida. And right now, the Bulldogs having some difficulty moving the ball, trying to possess. Shawnee once again taking it away. That back line of Elida is being very busy here in the early going. Well, and you're exactly right. Right now, I mean, it's it's about a three versus four with the Elida's defenders playing against Shawnee's power coming up, which is two or three of their top players on their team. And, and uh, they're also then doing a much better job at just controlling the middle. Uh, and, and so until Elida can somehow somehow get to the level of, of playing with the level that Shawnee is intensity-wise, it's going to be a long night for the Bulldogs. So we have multiple substitutions coming in for both teams as Shawnee has Lucia Pachon check in along with CeCe Schaff and Ella Mortz. And then for Elida, number 22, Kiana Bott, I believe, checked uh, in. Yeah, that was Lauks, 20. 20, yeah, 20, uh, that was uh, Lauks came in for Elida, and she went in for the Wallace okay. girl. So Olivia Lauks into the game. Kelsey, yep, she went in for Kelsey. There's a set of Wallace twins. There's a set of Blaine sisters. So there's <laughs> there's quite, there's a set of cousins. So this school's got quite a, quite a few similar last names we might be calling a lot tonight. So Elida loses possession on the far side. Throwing comes into the Indians. They're trying to work that sideline, but that time some miscommunication. The Lady Bulldogs will get to throw in. Another substitution coming into the game. Uh, that's going to be Mara Bell. She's coming in. Uh, she's replacing Bree Patrick over on the right uh, midfield side. So a nice challenge that time by Shawnee. Going to stay with the Bulldogs on the throw in, though. See, Lida wants to work that sideline, trying to get something moving. And this one, like pretty much everything here in the early going, ends up at the feet of the Indians. Nice run this time on the one-on-one. -on -one. Nice shot into the corner just off the far post. And you see, and right here is that second attempt. All of the Lida girls are still back, and, and that's now the second or third time. CC Schaft, who had just checked into the game, got the long run, had a great shot on it, but bounced it off of that far post. And her teammates, hard charging coming in for the rebound, had the follow-up shot. That one also no good. Ends up going out off of Elida, so Shawnee gets the corner kick. That one doesn't hit anybody. As that one's going to be rushed down, Elida quickly trying to get out, saving this one, and just going to send it out for well, the throw. And right in. there, she's unmarked. That's got to go up the field. So, so just a lot of uh, looks. Doesn't look like this is a, a team that's won 11 or 12 games so far this year. Looks, looks uh, similar, more, more like a beginning of the year trying to figure things out. So, and Shawnee come, or excuse me, Elida coming into tonight's game with the 11 wins, as you mentioned. Shawnee just five, but they have played a lot of close games. They have six uh, draws on the season. So they know what it's like to play those close games, and you got to think that they've got to feel a little bit momentum right now, and they would love nothing more to put one or two more in and give themselves some breathing room. Yeah, and in and, and, and soccer, especially those six draws, I mean, those are those can be one play away from having six more wins. So, so yeah, Shawnee's record might not show actually how solid they are, and 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 especially when it's in Eli and Shawnee rival, rivalry game, that record's always been thrown out the window. So, yeah, they definitely look like the team that, with a little more experience. And so Riley Smith for Shawnee had that free kick. Ends up not causing any damage for Elinus, so now they have it in the midfield. Trying to work it around, going to send a long run. Going to have a race to the ball. This one's going to be set and going to get past the keep for a goal. That one's going to be number 16, Lexi Good. She did a tremendous job of racing to that on the long feed. And then what a tremendous left foot to get that one by the keeper. So Lexi Good makes this one all even at one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back 
Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee Simmons Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back to Elida High School for tonight's sectional championship game as Elida has pulled all even with Shawnee at one. And, you know, Brady, we spent pretty much this entire broadcast so far talking about the Indians and how they seem to be controlling things and just kind of seem to step ahead. But just like that, the hustle from Lexi Good pulls this one even and Elida right back on the charge. And, and yeah, we mentioned her name a couple times, and, and as only a freshman, she plays uh, – with, with so much more experience. She plays like a fifth-year senior. Uh, she's she's leading the team with goals or, or right there second with, uh, with her cousin JoJo, but she can do that. She uh, she had a game earlier in the year and against a very good St. Mary's and scored three goals in a matter of six minutes. So so that's one they really got to watch and be careful for if you're Shawnee, but definitely it's frustrating, as you mentioned, to control the way you have and be tied 1-1 if you're Shawnee after 15 minutes. Yeah, that momentum swing is going toward... Uh, towards Elida as Lexi tries to track that one down. That one's going to get sent out. The throw will stay with the Bulldogs. As we are going to have wholesale substitutions coming in for the Indians, and it looked like the official called them in, but now... Well, uh, well, and, and that's one sure of those... sure what happened that time unless they were looking for an equipment fix. He's not going to allow the substitution this time because the possession stays well, with Elida. Looks like there's no uh, no Elida sub. So yeah. if it's with an Elida throw, it's got to yeah, there's got to be an Elida sub. Otherwise, Shawnee can't sub in. But yeah, not sure what the first whistle was for. But either way, we're back under play. Elida with the ball. As they are trying to work through, as a couple of players end up on the ground, they're okay. Back up. Elida is going to maintain the possession. Nice feed back to the middle. Here goes a feed out to Good. Good, looking for the cross. She has the one-on-one, -on -one, takes the right foot, feeds it in. That one was a little bit stronger touch than Elida would have liked. And this is going to go back to Shawnee. Going to have another yeah, this race This is out. one where you want to play back if you're Elida. Um, um, that's something That's something they've struggled with all year. They they, they don't like to play back, but that's a that's a definite uh, possession where you got to play that back. You know, sometimes, you know, I think, you know, when you know, we both have coached soccer, you much longer than I have. But sometimes you almost wonder if the kids don't start getting that in their head as they're running back to that ball. They start thinking about it too much and they start panicking, worrying about, am I going to kick it too hard? Am I going to mess it up? Am I going to have an own right. goal? So they just kick it out. Right. Instead, right. instead of taking nerve. the chance, that panic sets in and it just goes out. Ner nerve set in. And uh, again, our keeper, we mentioned Leah Ramirez. She's a great athlete here. Eddie Lida plays a three sport athlete. And and has done great work, but has also only played soccer for a few years herself. So sometimes I think she'd rather just play it out. But. So throw in stays with Shawnee. Little give and go this time. Feed to the middle. This one ends up in the box. Shawnee right there. They kick it in, and that is goal number two. A great redirect that time by, I believe, it's Morris on that far side. That one goes in, and Shawnee back on top, 2-1. to one. Yeah, Elida's reaction just extremely slow tonight, and, and, and they've been a step behind the you know this whole game so far. So. so that was Cameron Morris, number one, as she gets the goal. And for as much as talked about as the 1-1 defensive game that they played earlier this season, we got what the makings of an offensive shootout here early. 24-40. Left to go here in the first half. Yeah, there's quite a bit of – there's just a lack of communication on the on the back line. Just, I think some girls are maybe in some spots that are not usually. They, they don't – So Shawnee continuing with it here. Going to play it at their feet. Going to look for a little bit. Jim I is going to send this one back, and we're going to have, I believe, a free kick from out there as the whistle comes from the official. And I believe we had a correction on that goal. I think that was, was that Tama Jim I had the goal? No, it was Cameron, Cameron Morris. No, I, what, I think. I think that's, what, that's what we thought. We had yeah, somebody th telling us it might have been somebody else. I think else, Mom wanted a name to be called, right, uh, Tama. So that goal will stay with Morris. And now... Shawnee, they're going to have the free kick. Elida looking for the line, trying to get their wall set up. That one's going to get through, not touch anybody. It's going to go out and end up in a goal kick for Elida. 
So yeah. about a best case scenario there, Fury Lida after coming off of that one, not getting any kind of deflection, just ending in a harmless goal kick. Well, yeah, I think uh, sometimes Elida might get in a bit of a panic mode and and uh, th throw in a lot of girls and subs, and then it throws them off a bit. Um, so, so you know, I, I, you can see Joe. Well, JoJo's right back in her frustration. She doesn't want to be out the senior uh, captain leader. It, you know, wants to play the whole 80 minutes if she can. So, so more substitutions coming in for Elida as both teams have really use their bench here in this first half. We've seen Shawnee sub three to five at a time. Elida now subbing in three. They're trying to keep fresh legs out there. Elida looked like they had a good opportunity there to Lexi Good, who had the inside. Looked like she was gonna have some pretty good position, but not able to get that one down. Still gonna maintain possession in that midfield before Shawnee takes over. Yeah, another, you can hear so many Shawnee fans getting a little Disappointed. That looked like a possible foul and no call there. They've caught it pretty close back and forth for both groups so far. So I think it's always one of those. As long as it's consistent, let, it, let them just call it. And so Morris works along that far side. Going to drop it off. Looking for the give and go back into the box. As Morris not able to connect on that one. Long shot coming for Shawnee. And this one's going to be saved. Well, and again, we've mentioned this. This middle part is just getting dominated by Shawnee. Um, you know, Elida's got their scores up front, and 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 their defense is trying to hold up here. But but in the middle, of that, that second line of offense for Shawnee just has really been putting it right back, right back in on Elida's uh, back line. Now Shawnee works around in that, right on the edge of that middle to later third of the field. And they're going to move another long kick coming. This one is not going to be able to save just over the outstretched arms of Ramirez as she went up to try to get a piece of it, but did not get enough. Shawnee now is going to go up 3-1. to 21-27 left to go here in the first half. Shawnee on top, 3-1. to one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. Shawnee with three goals so far here in the first half, and they are trying to get something going again. And as Jim is going to work through the middle of that back line, finds herself all alone, plays this one out as Elida quickly is trying to get back to it. Well, and right here, we just keep talking about this, this uh, middle part for Elida just totally control or uh, being or for Sean he's totally controlling these Elida six uh, players and it almost looks like Elida's now with a double stopper which double holding mid whatever they want to call it which I guess to me when we're down by you're down by two <laughs> you can't do that you got you got a lot of game left and got to score so so here's Lexi good gonna try to see if she can't draw our team a little bit closer one man to beat and she can't get around Nice job maintaining control, though, but good defense by the Indians. Good. Tries to work along that outside edge. Gets cut off one more time. Sends this one to the middle, and it's going to be headed out by the Indians. That's great effort by both girls, freshman and sophomore, uh, Bella and and, uh, and Lexi. And I think they're going to have a few more years of battling. And, and, and good, good defense by Bella, Walt, uh, Bella Heil for Shawnee. And good attempt by Lexi, just no one there for the cross. A tremendous defensive effort. you got to give Bella a ton of credit back there. She was working hard to keep good from getting anything off. So Shawnee trying to get back on the offensive. Elida trying, just trying to get a little bit of momentum headed back their, uh, their way as this one's going to go wide, going to go out, result in a throw into the Indians. And we're going to have another substitution for Shawnee. Number 17, Chloe Cleves, Cleves coming back into the game. Well, and you mentioned a lot of subs on each side, you know, and and it, they're both playing oh, roughly 15 girls or so. The, the difference is you haven't seen any change with Shawnee uh, at all. And, and I think El Elida just looks a little disruptive where the girls playing not in the right spots or what. But but you see a change in their play to where Shawnee doesn't seem to be miss, missing a beat. Elida trying to get something going inside the box that time. It's going to get sent back away by Shawnee. And now they're going to try to play it long. That one was headed straight down. Shawnee did a nice job trying to get that one cut off. It gets sent back. And 
Bella kicks that one back out. This one's going to get played through. We'll see if we can cut it off as Hiles going to kick that one out. So right now it looks as, as Shawnee's pretty much got Bella kind of following Lexi good, and that's a good good decision if I'm Shawnee because if you can take her out of the game, uh, you're, you're taking out uh, a lot of your goal-scoring opportunities on the Elida side. So now Bella Albison is coming into the game for Shawnee as they continue to rotate through subs. Another Ball cross into the box. There's a finish. Got to be there. A race to that far end and a great job by Shawnee. Can't quite see the number from here. I believe that is Halbison who just checked into the game, manning that near post, able to send that one back. That one's going to go out, going to result in a corner for Elida. It's going to be their first one of the game. So Elida missed an opportunity there, it looked like, but looking for another one here on the first corner. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a crossover from Lexi and Julia Thomas was there to try to get, get something on it. Just didn't quite have enough on it to, to, to get it in the back of the net, so hopefully... We'll, we'll see how this corner kick play, plays for him to try to get them back in this. A lot of movement in the front of the net. That one's off the hands of the keeper. Played at its feet. Shawnee kicks that one out of there. Going to get sent back in by Elida. It's a good corner kick by Elida, but again, Shawnee doesn't panic and eventually gets the ball out. And so after all that, it's going to end up in a goal kick for Shawnee. You see Chloe Nance. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Going to send it towards the near sideline. It's going to be cut off nicely by Elida. As that was Brianna Patrick sending it back. Ball will stay with the Bulldogs on the throw in. So we, we've seen a bit of a change here. Uh, again, still 3-1, but I'd say this is the first time where we've had a few minutes where Elida's kind of kept it down here, just haven't had a chance to finish. See Patrick working hard in that corner, continuing to try to get that one. Shawnee looking for somewhere to go with it. This one's going to be sent off. As Elida not, or excuse me, Shawnee not able to control that one as Ella Mortz couldn't quite get around on that one, so it's going to stay with the Bulldogs. Ava Overholt with the throw in. This one's going to get sent back out. Shawnee playing very good defense right now when the ball is at the Bulldogs' feet. They've done a nice job of getting their feet in there, poking them away, not leaving too many openings. Elida, though, looking to change that right here. Good. Works with the right foot, tried to send it across, gets that one sent back. Long kick back up across midfield. Elida stays in control. And as you mentioned, that's not really something we had seen a whole lot of here in the early going. The midfield was pretty much dominated by Shawnee. Uh, they looked for another opportunity there, but it's going to end up rolling back to the keeper as Ramirez scoops that one up. Yeah, and if, if you're Shawnee, you, if you can somehow manage to get into this half you know, with that two-goal lead, that totally changes your second half. You have a chance to to, to not necessarily pack a box at all, but but uh, maybe get some of those uh, all-league offensive players helping you on D a little bit and just maintain this, this two-goal lead. So... Had a good opportunity that time as they were trying to get Lexi out on the run, but it's going to get sent out by Bella as Heil was able to get back there and get a foot on it. When you see, uh, you mentioned Bella's just playing a little deeper than she was, which again, you get a couple goals up, you can do that. And and obviously, Lexi Good showed the speed she has, so now we give her, you, you give her a couple feet if you're Shawnee and, and take that option away. Overhold on the throw in, plays it at the feet of a teammate. She gets it back, sends it back towards the middle. It's going to get sent away by Shawnee. Nice kick up the field by the Indians. And it looks like Tama going to send this one up as that one's going to be a little bit too much. Ends up rolling harmlessly all the way back to Ramirez. Under 15 left to go here in the first half. Shawnee on top, 3-1. Elida trying to see if they can't get something going here offensively. Halbertson working against this near sideline. That one's going to go out. Throw one's going to stay to Elida. Trying to play it up to Lexi, but that one got cut off. Elida maintains it as it goes into the box. 
Well, and you can hear some Elida fans want the hand fall. The problem is the refs on that backside that, that who's, who's making that call. This this guy's a little far back to be able to confirm the handball. So. Yeah, it was, that was a tough one to call from up here. It looked like uh, the Shawnee fans may have had an argument, but here's Jim Ike goes across. But that one, a great move by Ramirez to come out and knock that one away. And Elida able to weather that storm and send it down to the box. Shawnee trying to stay on the attack. Moves this one around. Ends up getting sent back. Bella Heil, she gets this one. And there's an Elida defender right there, though, to challenge her. Another run opportunity. Jim I was the closest Indian to that one, but once again, Ramirez out to grab it. Yeah, and for the most part, we've just seen uh, just the, the intensity alone that, that has just seemed to be dominant on the uh, on the Shawnee side. Another opportunity for Good. Good works through some defense and a great heads up play that time. Uh, by the goalkeeper, Chloe Nance, to come out right at the right moment and cover that one up and prevent Good from having her second goal of the game. Here's Jim I right around midfield, looking for a little give and go. Well, and you just see kind of that possession we've talked about just seems to be, Shawnee just seems to be, for the most part, a step ahead of everyone besides Lexi and JoJo. Lexi has another opportunity, one-on-one -on -one with Heil. She moves to the right this time, tries to get the right foot on it, but can't quite get enough on it. And Nance was right there for the save. And, and we keep mentioning it, but Shawnee's, you know, up, up two, but they got their uh, they got their work cut out with them with Lexi because she's just still getting opportunity, even though they seem to be marking her with two girls now. Yeah, if you're a lighter, you just want to keep trying to give good an opportunity because you got to imagine one of these she's going to be able to cash right. in on. Right, that one I think she, she had that open and just not enough power on it. More substitutions coming in. Three more subs for Shawnee. Four coming in for Elida. So they continue to use their bench, give their girls a rest. They know that this is going to be a long game that neither team's going to want to give an inch here. So it's definitely a big asset to have when you can get into tournament play, and especially into a sectional championship, and you're able to use this many off your bench, especially all at once. Right. Right, and, and the the key is just to not have any type of change of play here, and, and work through that uh, round of substitutions. The, the, the biggest problem, if you're Elida, is they're the girl that's had the only opportunities is now on the bench for you. So hopefully you get her back in within the next minute or two, maybe some quick water and back in. Both teams right now looking for advantage in the midfield, going back and forth with each other. Neither team right now really controlling the possession. This so one's going to get sent up, but Elida right there to send it back. And it's going to end up being a throw in. Jim I will take this one for the Indians. As another substitution comes in. Addison Neth coming back into the game for Shawnee. Just about 10 minutes left to go here in the half as both teams look like they may be settling just a little bit. As right now, it's kind of a back and forth. Nobody's really had a prolonged possession in quite a while, but Elida trying to get a run here. Cut off nicely by Heil. Yeah, a little uh, f first first time where we've been playing some of, the, some of this game in the middle of the field, as we said that, and then Shawnee's got another attack here. And that one just squeezes by Ramirez. As it looked like Jim I might have the one-on-one -on -one that time, but she ends up doing a nice job to drop that off to her teammate, number 22, Ella Mortz. And Ella Mortz just squeezes it. I mean, it, there could not have been that much space between Ramirez's hands and that front right, post. Right, right. Very close. Good effort by Ramirez. At this back, I, I just again, I think that's this is the second one of the four that. The, the back line just is, is, doesn't seem to be marking, and, and I mean, they're just passing all around them. So now a commanding three-goal lead for the Indians here in this sectional championship as Elida will look to try to see if they can't get something going here prior to halftime. 
You know, we've seen the Indians pretty much be in control for the most part, but Elida has had their opportunities. If they can get another goal before halftime, that'll really go a long way as they try to regroup during uh, while they're in the locker room. Yeah, and credit to Shawnee. They've definitely came out as the aggressive team since the, really since the, the first whistle. You mentioned Elida's had a few opportunities, but overall, Shawnee just hasn't stopped. They keep possession. They just, quite frankly, look like the better team. You, you wouldn't have known they were the lower seed with only uh, five or six wins, definitely, for, uh, in this match. And when you talk about tournament play, too, a lot of coaches will tell you, you know, records really don't matter. It's all about whether or not your team is peaking at the right time. And Shawnee, definitely, at least uh, here in the early going, looks like they're doing just that. Another opportunity on the redirect, but this one a little bit too high over the goal. So going to be a goal kick for Shawnee. Or, excuse me, for Elida. Yeah, you. I mean, you, their their back line's doing great, uh, maintaining Elida's couple threats. But uh, really, between Morris and Ryanauer and Tama, uh, with just all of these girls up front, just to seem a step ahead of all of the Elida girls. Long kick up, Shawnee once again able to cut that one off. They're going to fight for it on that far side. Nice challenge. Right now, it just looks like Shawnee's done a nicer job with spacing, and that has really helped them, especially when they've had those one-on-one -on -one challenges. They've had somebody to drop it off to. A lot of it looked like unmarked girls in those opportunities, and sometimes it's led to those big runs. Yeah, and, and again, stat-wise, just looking looking at the stats for on the Elida side, I, th I think a lot of this year they've uh, relied on two girls to really do 95% of the scoring and assists. So as Shawnee's kind of spreading it around more, and you can see that they're comfortable with four or five girls uh, uh, working working that offense, and, and Elida just hasn't been able to match that. And a lot of game left, but they're, they're digging themselves a hole. That's going to be hard to get out of with the talent Shawnee has. 7.30 left to go in here and a half. Multiple subs came back in for the Bulldogs, including Lexi Good. She has the one goal for Elida here tonight. Elida's going to have to get a little bit more physical here tonight, try to be a little bit more of the aggressor, but I don't know. This Shawnee speed looks like it might just be a little bit too much for him as uh, Jimai that time ends up on the ground, but the officials let them play through. Shawnee continuing, though, to try to find an opening, ends up at their feet. This one's going to go out, going to result in a goal kick. Yeah, and, and I think Shawnee had a good argument there. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I think uh, I think if the goal, score's not, I hate to say this, but I think if the score's not four to one, that's called. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's one of those ones where I think everybody you didn't even hear any pushback from Elida fans on right, that yeah, one. That one, <laughs> I think they just feel fortunate that they they weren't facing the uh, PK there. Jemai cuts this one off, but it gets away from her. Elida looks to send it up towards the midfield, but a little bit too far under it. And this one's going to be the deep kick that they were looking for. Good, though, not uh, not close enough as this one's going to roll harmlessly out for a throw in. Well, if, if you're, uh, you're Elida, you, you just need to get it on your half of the field just to take a, get a little bit of a break here. So it's going to go right back out. Fortunately for the Bulldogs, it went off of Jimmy, so they get the opportunity with the throw in. As this one's going to get kicked it's out. Going to be kick. a goal kick for Shawnee. So at least for the time being, that threat was neutralized. As we see Nance line this one up as she looks to send it up for the Indians. This one ends up towards the sideline. Elida able to cut it off. Saw JoJo Knight in there. Haven't called her name too much yet tonight. Yeah, and, and and we mentioned that's that's a problem. If you're not calling her name, that's who you need to be getting the ball. So, see Ava Overholt running down to get that one. She sends that out. Allow some time for her teammates to get down. Let the defense to get set up. This one off of Jim. I'm going to go out. Throw is going to go back to the Bulldogs. So Elida, they look a little tired, but they've got to find something here with five minutes left to go. Well, and right there, we, you know, and Lexi does a great job. But they, 
their Elida's forwards also got to take away those drops because what's happening is they're just step behind and it's going right back, right back into the de defensive third. Jim, I that time's going to get whistled for the offsides. That one was a pretty clear cut one, but you know, right now that back line too of Elida needs to do a little bit more communicating. You kind of see that, I think a reason that Jemai has gotten such great runs, they've just been slightly offset, so she's been held on sides that whole time, and that frees her up for those long runs. That time almost got burnt by it again, but Jemai got a little too excited. So free kick coming to Elida. Yeah, I mean, every every single girl on Elida's back line has gotten beat by multiple, multiple Shawnee players, so... And they've, they have faced a ton of pressure here in the other going. Shawnee's done a great job of just throwing different things at them and keeping them on their heels. Throw in once again to the Indians. And right now they're just maintaining possession and, and winning most of these balls. And, you know, it's still three and a half minutes left here, and Elida better pick it up or they're, they're going to get another one put against them before halftime even. So shots on goals are pretty close for both teams. Six shots on goals for Shawnee, four for Elida. But Shawnee has had a little bit more luck getting it into the back of the neck, net as they are up 4-1. to one. So as we mentioned, it hasn't been for short of opportunities for the Bulldogs. Just unfortunately, some of those shots have been right at the keeper and, and things that obviously haven't gone in for them. As Shawnee, on the other hand, have had some great opportunities. They've had some very nice long kicks as well that have found the back of the net. And they're trying to see if they can't maybe add one more here before halftime. Yeah, they're they're you're right. They're pretty much controlling all all three phases of the field. They're controlling the back line uh, for the most part. Lexi Goods broke th through a few times we mentioned, but but uh, Bell Hiles kind of maintained her, her ground back there. Uh, the mid they're definitely controlling, and then when they get to the offensive third, they're making runs and and easily moving past the 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 back line of Elida almost unmarked. So. So yeah, if you're Shawnee, great half. You, you, you continue you continue playing how you are, and and you put this game away. Elida looking for an opportunity that time as Brianna Patrick was trying to play it up ahead to good, but a little bit too much air on that one. So it ends up back at uh, the hands of the keeper. Another opportunity here as Patrick's trying to work through. Looked like she might have had an angle, but that one was a little bit too wide for her. Is it's going to get played out, and the throw-in will stay with the Bulldogs? Yeah, good, good pass there by the uh, through the middle from JoJo, and that, that that's something that Eli is going to have to do a little more of second half if they want to get themselves back in this. And as she has been pretty much the whole game, Bella Heil was right there to send this one back. Elida has to chase beyond midfield, but here's two Indians to chase that one down as they are having two to two right now for every one Bulldog defender. Another opportunity as Elida just able to get that one away. Well, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Elida had a drop back there, and even over on the far side, there's absolutely no reason that somehow Shawnee gets possession out of that, which should have been a clean, easy drop. So they've definitely got to clean things up and fix things. Drop off by Good, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see if Elida can put it in, and a nice save. This one's still live. Hiles able to get her foot on it. She's going to send it up. Another good opportunity for Elida, but they're not able to cash in. Great goalie play by Chloe Nance to come out and challenge that one, and then Bella Hile there to clean it up and send it upfield. Yeah, and, and, and you're right. I definitely feel Shawnee's had more opportunities and probably better opportunities, but Shawnee or Elida themselves could definitely have another at least one or two to keep this game a little closer the problem is three goal lead is, is a tough one to come back especially in a, a two teams like Shawnee and Elida for a sectional title so throw in coming for the Indians and actually now they're going to change the call this one's going to go to the Bulldogs just 30 seconds left to go here in the half Shawnee able to win this 50-50 ball, which they have been able to get the majority of those tonight. He saw Jemai back there just lurking, hoping that one would come through, but he light able to send it away. That back line gets tackled, and we're going to have a whistle go against Shawnee as the free kick moves up quickly. This one gets by Heil. Three seconds left to go, two, one, and that one's going to bring the first half to a close. So we've had a lot of fast-paced action here in the first half. 
Back and forth early going. We had a 1-1 tie, but then Shawnee broke out. Three unanswered goals. They're going to give them the 4-1 halftime lead. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, or home style, happens here. We are just about underway here at Elida High School on tonight's sectional final. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Brady Overholtz. And that first half, Brady, was pretty much all Shawnee as they have the 4-1 lead. Elida had opportunities but couldn't cash them in. What kind of adjustments do you think Elida needs to do here to get back in this one? Well, yeah, you're uh, right. I mean, they're pretty much dominated by Shawnee. I mean, I mean it's real simple. They're they're down three. They just got to score. Uh, you got to keep your offense up as Ava's uh, Overholt's making a little run, which we didn't see one of those first half. So, good opportunity right here to end the get go as this one was played in the box and ends up being saved by Nance. So we see Elida to have those opportunities in spurts. It hasn't been necessarily long, prolonged offensive possessions, but they have gotten those runs and have gotten uh, shots on goal tonight. But Nance has been able to stop quite a few of them. Well, and we and, and and she's playing well, and nothing against her, but but Elida's also played a couple of these shots are right to her, and they're they're gonna have to start finding those posts. And, and Sean, the difference, as you mentioned, Shawnee's. Uh, played every ball to the corners or post and, and made them pretty much where Elida's goalkeeper couldn't couldn't stop those. So for Eli to get in here, they got it they can't be playing playing these right back to uh right back to the goalie. Now Elida trying to have one of those prolonged offensive possessions. Been a nice job keeping it down here in the offensive third. This one's gets sent over to the box, but Shawnee able to get to that one first, gonna send it out, gonna have a throw in to Elida. So yeah, but you mentioned it, it, again. If if you're Lida, you you have to keep pushing. Uh, a lot of times they play a holding mid. The holding mid's not going to help when you're down three because at this point, giving up more goals doesn't matter. You have to score. So I, I would I would keep those mids up and, and keep the attack up, uh, and, and let Lexi Good and JoJo Knight do what they've done all year and, and score goals. So you got to keep them girls in and and find a way to get back in this. Uh, See, Lida looks like they're coming out a little bit more physical, trying to get after that one, a little bit more uh, aggressive play after uh, coming from the Bulldogs, and at least here in the early going, and they're seeing benefits as they've been able to keep it down in their offensive side for quite a while now, winning some more of those 50-50 balls, which was not something we were seeing in the first half. Shawnee now trying to find an opening, sends this one up. Nice drop off. Shawnee's going to have a run. Jemai tries to get to it one-on-one -on -one past the goalkeeper as there's some contact right at the top of the box. Elida able to get this one. They're going to send it out as Jemai there for a minute looked like, wasn't sure if it was frustration or a little shaken up, but she looks like she's up and moving around okay. Yeah, yeah, you're not you're not sure because, she, and, and she's a great player, but she can get frustrated. Coach OB sent us some of the stats and, she she seems to get fouled a lot, but can foul. So so I think it might have been a little of both. She was a little frustrated, but nice ball right, here's opportunity another. for Shawnee. This one went right through the legs of Ramirez, as she looked like she may have had that one stop, but on the rebound, Shawnee able to follow that one in, as Cameron Morris gets her second of the game and puts Shawnee up five to one. 37-01 of the second half. Shawnee gets the scoring going here in the second half. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So Shawnee right back on the attack. A lot of contact down there just outside the boxes. This one is going to go back to Elida. They're going to look to try to send it upfield quickly. Well, yeah, it's you know, you know, and thus far just we, we saw Elida come out a, a little more aggressive these first three, four minutes, and and then right back though, it just controlling the middle of the field and just kind of 
dominating the, the Elida's back line and, and mids there is, is what we keep seeing. And somewhere these this Elida back line has to start communicating to one another and marking because they're just watching girls go left and right, all, all past them all over, making runs. And Another opportunity played at, at um, Jemai's feet right there outside the box. Can't get free. He's going to end up sending this one out. Last touch by the Bulldogs. Quick throw in for the Indians. They're trying to see if they can't get another right. opportunity here. Right, and, and, and right here, again, they're just having their way kind of in the middle of the field and not getting marked tight, and shots continue to come. And Fortunate for Elida that that one did not go in as that was a great ball played wide as that just hit that back post, did not go into the net. And fortunate that there was no rebound as Shawnee has done a great job all night long of sending help and sending those secondary players in on shots. But that was one of the few times they weren't able to get to the rebound. Well, and, and, and uh, if you're Elida, I'm not quite sure what that call was there, but if you're Elida looking at that back line and, and knowing again, some of their bench players and stuff, I mean, at one point, it's uh, I don't know if, if you try someone else or what because I don't think it's working with any of them back there. So another free kick opportunity here for the Indians. They're going to send this one in, and this one is going to be down into the arms of Ramirez, but she's not able to gather it in. Another rebound for the Indians are going to result in a goal as right now Shawnee is pouring it on, and that goal, I believe, is going to go to number seven, Cameron Ridenauer. And she was there to clean it up as it looked like Ramirez was going to gather it in, but just kind of bounced off of her arms and rolled out. And Shawnee, as they have done all night, they just seem to have the players in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, they just uh, they just are hands down just the better team all together. So it's so 6 1 lead. They're going to intercept this one, going to move around. You see, uh, that one's Ella Mortz. And if you're Shawnee and, and Coach O'Brien and, and the rivalry that's here and having to get themselves ready for, for tournaments. Morris takes he, a hard hit there. She ends up down. We'll see if we have a stoppage. And she hasn't looks come like, up uh, yet, but looks like she's going to be okay. But Elida looks like they have a player down on that far sideline. Yeah, line. that's overhaul. So so she, her her mom's over on that up. side, so she'll be all right. <laughs> Looks like she might her just dad, be her dad's <laughs> over here talking. So, yeah. Looks like she might just be getting stretched out. So hopefully just a cramp. Nobody going out quite yet. So if she's able to get that stretched out, she'll be able to stay in this one. She'll be a big part of what Elida does as they try to get back in this one. As they work on her, we're going to step aside, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Ava Overholt was able to get up and leave the field under her own power, so that was good to see. Hopefully just a little bit of cramping has to get worked out, and I imagine she'll be back in rather quickly. Shawnee has really picked up right where they left off there in the first half as they are up 6-1, and right now they just seemed... You know, it, it, you know. sometimes there's really no strategic explanation. Sometimes there's just teams that are on, and they seem on tonight. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, one thing that, again, just from coaching and looking at schedules in the past, uh, Sh Shawnee just played Saturday, and, and Coach O'Brien does a good job at keeping these girls playing and being fresh up till tournament time. Uh, Elida, no disrespect to Van Wert, but most of their player their their players haven't played for a week and a half, and and you can tell. I mean, it just looks like two different teams. A team that Saturday uh, playing Shawnee playing and and in, in some not the best weather and, and grinding through to where Elida's had it real easy for about almost two weeks, and and it definitely is not helping them having that time off. You know, so maybe you think, well, the rest, but to me, I, I don't want that. I want to just keep playing and. And, and keep that going. And as you mentioned earlier, one team's peaking <laughs> and one team's definitely not. And and and, and hats off to Shawnee because they're coming out and playing hard and are the better team. Seeing more substitutions coming in as we saw that a lot there in the first half for both teams. As Shawnee brings three in and Elida just has one substitution. A throw in goes to the Indians. 
They're looking for Morris on that far side. She's able to get a foot on well, that board. Goes again. out off the left foot. That redirect. Ramirez knocked it down. And fortunate for Elena that there was nobody else in the box as Ramirez was able to get out to that one. Yeah, the, these girls are just in the in the box, just unmarked. And, and I wouldn't put one, you know, as far as the goalkeeper goes, I don't, I don't think we've seen one that was, oh, she should have easily had that. I think it's just these girls are getting shots within the 18 and not really giving Leah any chance at all to, to make a play on these balls. They're just good, good uh, set pe or good pieces on the Shawnee side and in the right spot. And so you lied in now. Over uh, midfield for really the first time here in the second half. We spent most of the time down on the Shawnee side, but this one quickly is going to get sent back. So again, if you're Elida, you just this, this might be, I don't know, they, this might be the first time it's been on their half since the very beginning of the game. Good, just a little bit high on that one. It looked like she had an angle as she tried to see if she couldn't potentially chip the goalie. And just a little bit too much, a little too much air on that one. Zoe uh, this uh, senior Zoe Foxball checking into the game for the first time tonight for Elida. As Shawnee will have the goal kick. So Nant sends this one away as Elida is hoping that they can't keep this one on their side of the field. Yeah, at this point, uh, I mean, we got a lot of soccer left, but Shawnee's just just too good and playing too hard tonight for, I think, Elida to get, come back on five goals. But I guess on the Elida, and you got to at least keep pushing and 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 not give up and and try to do something to get some type of spark. Now here comes Elida. They are on the attack, moving across midfield, trying to get a run. This one, as Bella Heil is able to track that one down, works along this near sideline, sends it up to her teammate. Well, and, and uh, for uh, Shawnee's side, at, at some point, you know, I'd say we're about 10 minutes away, but but it, it, if you are Shawnee, you actually you were not expecting this tonight, but you have a chance to rest some of your 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 key players uh, and keep them healthy moving forward. So well, along that though, kind of goes into a little bit of the philosophy that you were just talking about when you're talking about scheduling and, and keeping your players running. The winner of tonight's game will not play again until October 25th. It is a long layoff between tonight and the next time that they will take the field, just because of how the brackets played out. So you almost wonder if if you're a light if you don't don't want to keep playing yet, or Shawnee, excuse me. Right. You do run the risk of those injuries, but you know it's going to be a while before these girls get some competitive right, soccer. Right. I think we're we're a week out, which is it's it's extremely long time. I was looking at the volleyball, and I think they may be a day or two off, and and they're back in, and 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 the way this bracket worked out, the winner doesn't play until a week from today, I think. Um, and that's not going to be an easy game as you look through the bracket. Um, we have a, a tremendously good game. Um, you know, looking ahead a little bit, you would assume it's going to be St. Mary's coming out of the play-in game, and they're gonna—they're the two seed in this bracket. They will then go play the three seed Brian, and that was who Shawnee will then go and take on right. uh, the winner of that Brian St. Mary's game. So uh, that's going to be a difficult game. St. Mary's has had a, a tremendous good, uh, year, only one loss, and that's a one-loss team that's the two seed in this bracket. So even if you manage to get out of this bottom bracket, right. you still then have to go deal with Liberty Benton up in the top bracket, the one seed. I mean. It is a it is yeah, a killer throw everyone here. everyone stayed away from uh, from that top bracket as you mentioned Liberty Benton's definitely the team to beat but uh, in this bottom bracket alone you, you just have some solid teams all the way around and and to be quite honest as low of a seat as Shawnee is seeing how they're playing now and maybe just peeking at the right point I don't want to see them either if I'm if I'm the winner of the uh, of the St Mary's Brian match. Here's good. Yeah, she sends another one just over the top as she once again had a great angle with that right foot, but couldn't get it to sneak in between the top goal post and the, the goalie's top hand. About identical location as that of that last one, too. So yeah, they have to add, not taking everything away from Elida, they have to add three or four real good opportunities to get some goals, a couple in the first half and now two this half, but Unfortunately, they haven't fell, and they've got themselves in this hole that's going to be very, very difficult to get out of. 
28 minutes left to go here in the second half. Shawnee on top, 6-1. As Elida is looking for something, anything right now to give them a spark. Well, we have seen Shawnee do just what we were saying, that a couple fresh faces on the Shawnee side. Uh, two, as it looks like Bren Patterson's out there, 23, that came in earlier, and a few other girls that younger get some little, little varsity experience here in the sectional final. This one's going to roll out on that far side. Throw in stays with the Indians. As he lied to team, eight seniors, a, a lot of experience, but they also have a, a lot of girls that are looking to try to build on something uh, for next year. As they would like to have some momentum, even if they can't come all the way back here tonight. You know, you'd like to have not necessarily the worst taste in your mouth going into the offseason if you can maybe get a little bit of a rally here going and, and maybe put a few goals in. Yeah, I think uh, just kind of knowing some of the girls and stuff on this Elida team, I think they might have been thinking this was maybe a bit of a building year compared to last year where they lost a lot. But but in reality, they're, they they ended up having a great season and 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 just maybe aren't aren't performing the way they need to tonight. But, but uh, I, I think they have a lot coming back and something to build on. But... Yeah, you, you want to just give all you can this last 25 minutes and you just keep 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 this game somewhat respectable and maybe get a goal or two back to get it a little closer than where we are now. So that Elida back line doing a much better job here over about the last 10 minutes. We haven't seen Shawnee able to really get any sort of extended possession. They haven't really gotten any great runs either. So I think we did see a couple of substitutions, and so the fresh legs maybe might maybe helping a little bit as they've been able to to control things and settle things down back there a little bit. This yeah. one's going to be deflected out. Going to throw in stays with Elida. And uh, yeah, yeah I'm, we're not seeing. You don't see Morris in there right now. You don't see Ridenhauer. You don't see Tama in there for for Shawnee, and, and, and that's you know the right move and I, I don't think you keep them out I don't, the rest of the game, match but you're, you're much more freely subbing them in and, and keeping them playing but but giving them maybe seven eight minutes breaks instead of one or two here's good with another run she's gonna send it into the box redirect as that one it gets deflected by Nance a great job just to get a piece of it and then it gets sent out by Shawnee but it looks like we're gonna have a foul there in the middle of the field so that penalty will go against Shawnee. Elida will get the free kick. Yeah, good ball. Great ball again by, by Lexi over here on this right side, right to the middle, and, and good one touch by Wallace, uh, who's only a freshman. She's one of the four freshmen that gets a lot of playing time. Uh, Kylie, and just again, good, st good stop. Free kick is on its way. Nance right there to gather it in. So. So the senior goalkeeper, Chloe Nance, going to send this one up along midfield. Nice punt. That one is going to be played at her teammates' feet. Just have a whistle. A little too much pushing on that far side, so Shawnee's going to get the free kick. Yeah, I would, I would think most of the teams, as you mentioned, you know, filling out these brackets with some games tonight, they're going to be uh, – a bit maybe surprised from, from the outcome that we've seen at least thus far. Uh, still 24 minutes left, but uh, I don't think many were expecting this. As I think you said earlier, that 1-1 one, one tie was more of what we were maybe maybe thinking this could be. be but hey, Lida has had a tremendous year. We mentioned these guys played the back uh, game three for both squads. Elida 11-3 and two overall. They were 5-2 two and two in the WBL. The WBL uh, is, um, has been, especially this year and pretty much every year. I mean, it is just a grind um, uh, out on the, the soccer field for these teams. It's five two and two. You would think that sets you up in a good position and actually put them down fifth in the league or fourth in the league. Um, as you know, once again, the top part of that Western Buckeye League was just brutal. Elida actually, excuse me, finished fourth behind Bath, St. Mary's, and then Ottawa Glendorf with what they're doing uh, this year. Yeah, um, and, and you meant yeah every every year now. Uh, OGs kind of <laughs> control things the last few, <laughs> yes. but 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 uh, 
besides them, it, it always seems to be about five or six teams that are just right there kind of in, in, in the middle from those second all the way down through seven spots. And, and, and at any given time, any of those teams can, can get on a run and, and, and get themselves all the way to district, district finals, and, and, and you know, continue on with their season. And Elida's done that a few times the past few years. And I think last year when they met Shawnee, Shawnee was the higher seed, and it kind of roles have exactly reversed. Elida came out and won a sectional final game at Shawnee last year, 4-1, to one, and kind of controlled it. And to be honest, we're seeing about the exact opposite this year with Shawnee controlling things. So... I would, Coach O'Brien's been around a long time. I think she's reminding them Shawnee girls about that match last year. And yeah, they came in tonight with a five, four, and six record. You mentioned a lot of close games. Is um, they were used to kind of that that pressure, and then you wonder if maybe that early goal, a little bit of um, that kind of that pressure, maybe that just that relief off their shoulders allowed them to play a little bit more freely tonight, as they looked like they were just flying all around. Didn't, they were they looked a lot more free tonight than I think a lot of people are used to seeing out of them. Right, right. I think I, I think you're exactly right. They've came out more like they were the team in, in control. Uh, right from the very very uh first whistle and, and really haven't let up and just keep plugging away uh, we mentioned elitis had a few shots here and there but but shawnee just hasn't hasn't let let them really do anything consistently besides a few breakaways elitis had so ramirez with the save a few moments ago as shawnee continues to attack and, and challenge her and you also mentioned I mean, only having four losses. That, that's that's one of the best, you know, soccer is so much different. So many people that don't understand soccer. What a tie. But four losses is right up there with any other team in the league. So so loss-wise, they haven't lost anymore. They've just happened to be, be, be have so many ties, which six in a year is almost <laughs> unheard of. Yeah. But it's quite a few. This one is going to go out. Last touch by Elida. So Shawnee's going to get a corner. Looks like uh, one of the girls that has subbed in is taking that. So it's Addison oh, Neff. Oh, and Neff's in there. She's a starter, a sophomore. She's taking the corner, sends this one. A lot of traffic in front of the net gets sent away. Nice job by Ramirez. Great, great ball by Neff. Good, uh, wait, good job by Ramirez, as you said, to punch that one back out of there. And at this point, they're just, Eli's just trying to survive to not allow Shawnee to get double digits if they wanted to the way some of this games went. So 20 minutes left to go here in the game. Shawnee and Firm Control 6-1, but Elida trying to put a stop to that, trying to see if they, they can't get things moving their way offensively towards the end. Throw-in's going to stay with the Indians. One-on-one -on -one challenge on the far side. This one's going to get sent into the box. And we have a whistle, but not 100% sure what that call was. Yeah, the near near official didn't didn't make any call, but but over on this side we got the call, and you hate to say it, but when a score gets this way, whether an official wants to admit it or not, a lot of times some of the calls can be a little, I don't know, with the word bias maybe to for the for the team that's down by five. So Elida had the free kick, but Shawnee continuing to put the pressure on, trying to keep it down on their side of the field. Moves around up to the midfield, but seems like wherever that ball goes, there's a white jersey right there. And right here where we're talking again, this is that middle of that field where Shawnee just controlled so well today. And So Elida continuing to try to move things up, but Shawnee right now putting some extra pressure on. Had some contact on that far side, gets left all alone. They're going to send it right over the keeper's head and into the back well, of that the was, net. What a shot. Yeah, it looked like, I think, looks like the Carmen Blaine senior just, I don't know if the possible, possible foul or what, but it just, it just, she got, she got kind of ran right over and the Shawnee girl just kept going and finished again. Ella Mortz with a tremendous shot from deep. 
as she put that in a perfect place as it was just over the keeper's head into the back corner of the net. As Shawnee now has extended their lead to 7-1. With that six goal differential, we will have a running clock for the rest of the game. As Shawnee able to take this one away. Gonna work along that far sideline, gonna move it up. Mort's trying to run to it. This one's gonna get sent out. And I believe we're gonna actually have a, I think it's gonna be a penalty over there. So free kick's gonna come to Elida. I believe that's Mort's, a little bit hard to see from, from here. Yeah, that's Mort's. Some contact over right. there, officials say too much. Looks like we see another group of Shawnee girls, some fresh legs coming in. And not that, I, I, I think uh, they were safe with up five, but <laughs> maybe the sixth one, I think, decided, okay, let's get let's get these last few girls in here, get them a little, get them a little playing time. Here's Jim I with the long cross. Going to send it into the box. Going to be playing at the feet, but Morris not able to trap that. And it's going to go out and ends up in a... Goal kick for Elida. That's a great ball. Again, I, you just you keep seeing Shawnee playing, and, and honestly, that was a great ball up to Morris again. And could have been another one real quick. Morris, Jim I, Morris, and I can't see who the fourth player coming out is, but those I four so. are I starters, CC, and they're yep. heading out. Yeah, I believe you're right. So Shawnee trying to get some fresh legs in here, give some um, other girls a little bit of a, of a run here as this one is uh, ticking down, 16.30 left to go in the game. Here's Good, works one-on-one. -on -one. She's gonna feed it into the box. Ends up at the feet of one of her teammates, but she can't connect and it's gonna get set back. And that was... Uh, Here's Good, looking for the run. She's gonna send it with the right foot, but didn't connect as solid as you're used to seeing out of Good. And Nance able to cover that one up for the save. Yeah, that was... Uh, and I, you hear some, you hear some Elida fans, but I, I didn't see anything wrong with that at all. Good, good ball across by Lexi to her cousin JoJo, but she was sliding. It looked like to me on that one. So, um, yeah, just now here, Shawnee with another run. I'm gonna send it to the middle of the field. Nobody there. One of the few times you've seen Shawnee play it cross, and there was nobody to gather that one in. As Elida is gonna send this one back up. Good, out on the run one more time. Lexi Good, one on one. This one's gonna get sent out as Elida will have the corner kick. And you mentioned a few of those starters on Elida, or on Shawnee's front line going out. I would doubt we'll see the, the few of those back in at this point. I think it's getting a little, getting a little colder out and that grass gets a little slicker. I, you know, by this point, I, yeah, let's just, let's just keep you, uh, you guys healthy for next week. So Elida setting up the corner kick. Let's see if they can't get some offense on this opportunity. Under 15 left to go here in the game. Good ball towards the front of the net. Nance does a nice job of reaching up, knocking that one away. Elida had an opportunity at the rebound, but it looked like maybe the spin of the ball was a little tricky. Ends up coming off the side of the foot, and Nance is able to gather it in. Yeah, good, uh, good serve by Katie Munson. Uh, and again, that's just, I think that difference we've seen uh, on the, those crosses, those finishes, just Shawnee's just connected on pretty much all. Uh, I mean, 14 shots, seven goals. That's, that's uh, doing very good compared to Elida's eight shots and one. So so they're, they're finishing 50% of their shots. So that's just that, been that difference between this game really since the beginning. So Elida with the throw in. It looks like they're going to have an opportunity to try for the long run. This one actually got cut off by one of the Bulldog players, dropped off as they look like they were trying to find good on that outside again. Yeah, and we're seeing some some different girls on both sides. You see uh, JoJo and Lexi both in for for Elida up front. Um, I think at some point you don't you don't want to give in, but at the same point, 
it, it, it just hasn't seemed to be working all night for Elida. So. so a little a quick stoppage that time, but Elida's going to end up with the throw in. And we mentioned that rolling clock as the, the score becomes... That, that such a wide margin, it keeps things going. And, and it's something they added a few years ago, and it really was a good decision because towards the end of the game, that can just seem to drag on if, if you're not going, you know, football has it and some others. Well, and one of the new rules they added this year as well, which we didn't really think would come into play, and I think, you know, with just under 13 minutes left to go on this one, I don't think it's going to come into play here either. But the new rule in tournament play, the eight goal difference at, at halftime, and I believe even into the second half at any point, if it gets that eight goals, the game's over. Yeah. yeah. You know, instead of continuing to let it play, especially in tournament play and get the lopsided wins and, you know, risk the injuries and all those things, they decided to try to um, see if they couldn't do something about some of those as that one finds the side of the net, not the inside of the net. Stay 7 1 difference. Well, and yeah, and some of those, especially, you know, as you said, may, maybe not as we get into the districts and, and regionals obviously but some of these first second rounds of sectionals can get can get really ugly where you know it, football only only some of your better teams you know are, are qualifying for for soccer every single team's in here so some that haven't won all year and, and again it's not necessarily fair to those teams either to run a score up 15 20 we've seen in soccer which is just ridiculous in my opinion yeah and i actually i think it's a great rule huh? i'm right. glad that they had the foresight to do that i i coach soccer or i'm excuse me, i coach uh, lacrosse in the spring it's, lacrosse is also one of those sports in the ohsa every team makes it well those bottom and the top there's right. a big difference and you can get some very lopsided scores and you know i, I think as this one just falls out wide as the light is continuing to try to get opportunities and see if they can't put some goals up here late but yeah, I, I do think it's a it's a good rule that the OHSA adopt for soccer. And, you know, I I would I hopefully like to see them and take a look at some of these other sports and potentially adopt right. the same thing. Right, right. So 11 minutes left to go in the game. Shawnee still on top as Chloe Nance sends the goal kick up. This one's going to go out and back to Elida. Let's see, Lida has not quit. These girls haven't given given in at all. We see them continue to try to push. They're fighting for the ball. They've had some good opportunities here late to, to get some goals in. Just have just been off the mark. Looking to change that now. Cross. So yeah, we have seen the the ball stay around here a little more. As for the most part, both teams have uh, some more of their subs in besides Elida's two front runners with uh, Jojo and Lexi, but so Elida continuing to move it around, looking for an opening. This one is going to be settled, and it's going to be sent up by Shawnee. Here's good on the throw-in. He's going to send across all the way back might to Nance. Get dangerous. And it <laughs> does. What a return by Good. Lexi Good sends that one in from deep. And I don't know if you gave her 100 shots if she'd be able to recreate it. But sometimes when you just got a nose for the net, you can make things happen. And Lexi Good that time was able to put her a good foot on that one, put a high arc, and put it into the corner. Well, she's a... She's she's had quite a, some good shots tonight and throughout the year and and some of those that might, might have been better shots that somehow just didn't go in. Uh, she kind of deserved to maybe get one back. But I think you're right. I think she, that one was kind of owed to her after some of the yeah. shots that we've seen from her tonight that have been stopped. At at some point though, I'm I'm thinking and again she's we mentioned she's only a freshman, but her cousin JoJo's a senior. At, at what point do you? Do you, I guess, leave them in, or I, I don't know. That my, my coaching side of me thinks, okay, maybe, maybe let the senior come off and give her, you know, let the home fans give her a round of applause because she, she's really been a key four-year starter for Elida uh, and JoJo Knight, her uh, Lexi's cousin. So, yeah, a tough way to uh, end the career, but does take away from any of the accomplishments that she's had over the years. Elida, though, looking for another one. Here's good. 
A little bit too far on that one, and that might have been a mistake by Shawnee as Lexi gets taken down. And, and they're going to say yeah, that's going to be a goal kick. I think, think it was already out, as we have what ref's saying. And, and uh, again, I, I think Bella was out, Bella Heil, but um, in, 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 Shawnee's defense, if you're going to keep your two best players in, if you're Elida, I guess I'm going to bring someone back in to try and stop you, which Bellis has done a great job. So, Well, I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, as a coach, too, you know, it's it's 7-2. to two. Yes, it is a, a wide range, but, you know, right. crazy things right. happen. Right. If you want to start losing the momentum and you get a couple of, of quick, you know, goals in, and then all of a sudden now you start playing tight, I mean, you, you just never know. So, hey, if they're going to continue to play, you know, we'll keep some girls right. back there right. as well right. and try to stop them. Right, yeah, so... Uh, I think uh, both teams have pretty much made all those adjustments besides the two that Eli had up front. So, so if Coach O'Brien's, yeah, I got to get, <laughs> I got to get someone <laughs> back in there. So it looks like she's actually got a couple of her starters back in there on defense with uh, Cleves and uh, Hiles, Hiles back in. So, Delaney Blaine coming into the game for Eli. The throw in will stay with the Bulldogs. This one's going to get sent deep. Going to be a race to the, to the ball. A little bit of contact. Going to continue to stay with it, continue to challenge. Shawnee able to get rid of it. Seven minutes left to go. Shawnee with an opportunity, splits the defenders. Yeah, this could be another one. Gets the chip and over oh, and just a little wide. From our angle, I thought that was going in. I did too. At. It looked like she had managed to get that right over the keeper's head and in. It goes out wide and ends up in a goal kick. It was great hustle by uh, Halpelson, though, for Shawnee. As she looked like she had an opening and an opportunity. You said on, on, on both squads with Eli obviously ending tonight as we're winding down and, and with Shawnee continuing on. But for some of these younger girls that uh, you mentioned the competition coming, they're probably not going to see the field much after tonight. Um, so it's a great opportunity for Shawnee to get some of these girls in that uh, a lot of times are JV players. You're allowed to dress quite a few more for, for the tournament. So you get, you're getting some JV girls that probably thought they were just going to dress and not play at all throughout the whole tournament and they're getting 15 20 minutes of, of action which keeps that motivation and fire going for some of these girls that you know as they become sophomore junior seniors the next few years at shawnee and this one's going to get played up again and you know sometimes this these tournament plays even if it's you know you know, in the quote unquote mop up duties or however you want you want to put it, can become very valuable for oh, these yeah. girls. They get yep. an opportunity to play in these big time games under the lights with a lot of people watching. Elida with another opportunity. That one just goes wide. I'd say, well, we got a bad angle up here, yeah. right? yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the second goal in a roll that looked like I it was yes. gonna roll in. And that one did not find the back of the net as Elida had another opportunity but couldn't put it in. You know, but you're talking about the minutes that they're playing now. You also never know when you're going to have injuries, when right. things are going to come up, and you may have to rely on some of these girls, and it's good to be able to see them out here now to see how you know, they can handle themselves. Well, you're wanting to get as many as you know, – for, for years it was 22 girls were allowed to dress, and I believe now, I, th I think, honestly, ever maybe since COVID or whatever it has been, I think they've went up to 25 now. Normally, most teams are only playing 15 to 16 of those girls, but in a rare situation, you can play some of these younger girls. Yeah, it's great experience for them, and – you mentioned crazier things have happened where a girl that might think she's dressing and never seen the field is somehow taking a BK kick in a tournament <laughs> game. So. so we mentioned the road does not get any easier here uh, for Shawnee as we presume that they will be able to hold on here tonight and they will move on. They play the winner of uh, the top part of this bracket, which has Brian seated, sitting there waiting um, on the bye. They will play... Brian plays the winner of St. Mary's and Kenton. No disrespect to Kenton, but at least on paper, it does look like the favorite in that one would be St. Mary's, right. which would set up a, a big matchup between St. Mary's and Brian. And then Shawnee then would play the winner of that game. It still is a long time to have to sit and wait. The Shawnee won't take the field again until October 25th. 
So as you're trying to keep your kids ready over the next week, you know you have a big matchup regardless of whether you play Bryan or St. Mary's in that game. St. Mary's, a little bit more familiar with, obviously, with the WBL. Bryan, maybe not so much. How do you get your kids kind of in that mindset and keep them focused towards that tournament run? Well, well I think you, uh, you, you know, first, yeah, maybe tomorrow's that day where when I was coaching, tomorrow's a day where you take it very easy, uh, even if you just – in, in coach's classroom type of, of hanging out, you know, maybe some uh, – I'd always make our parents' association and get us some food or something because you do have a while off. I think you then have some good practices the rest of this week, Thursday, Friday. Um, you watch. You even make it a key, team event to watch the – you know, or, or some of your key players go watch the Brian and St. Mary's game w whenever that happens. Or, or sorry, the uh, – yeah, the – the because you're going to be able to see that game. And you can scout them, you know, just as a team. Again, assuming it is St. Mary's. And and then a, another big practice on Monday and ready to play. But you're right. I, I think the problem with Eli has been they've been off for so long. And you've noticed it. They came out flat. And to be honest, I don't think they, they've ever they've, – ever since that first goal or two, they haven't really been in this. So you, you can't let that momentum up. But you have to – as they're still shooting, um, but you, but you have to just somehow find 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 something where you're staying competitive but not doing too much for any type of injury. So two thirty left to go. Is Elida is going to send the goal kick back? And tournament run definitely does not get any easier. As this is a very tough uh, district, as everybody believes, all roads will probably end with having to go through Liberty Benton, if uh, regardless of who comes out of that bottom part of the bracket. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned I, I believe St. Mary's and Liberty Benton tied or had a close game themselves earlier in the season. So, so yeah, Liberty Benton to me was a clear one, but Liberty Benton uh, do, doesn't necessarily see that entire WBL schedule that all these kids have have battled through. Uh, again, they are very good. They are a very good team and competed with OG also. But but uh, but yeah, I think whoever gets out of here has a very good shot at, at you know, giving Liberty Benton a, a nice match in that finals. Yeah, you mentioned Ottawa Glandorf, and yeah, I haven't had an opportunity to see that team, but I did see them multiple times last year on their run uh, to that state final that ended, you know, unfortunately with the loss of state runner up. And you, you know that they've been eyeing that 16 and one overall on this season. Another talented, tremendous group going through uh, Ottawa Glandorf, as it seems like, and no matter what the sport is right, they have right, it at that right. point. But you got to think when you look at that that team, that's another team that is very capable of, of being down there in that state oh, title yeah. game. I, I think I, I, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I think they, they have a better chance this year than they even did last year to, for the state title. Now, obviously, when you get down there and you see some of these Division three schools from Cincinnati and 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 the bigger cities, Cleveland's, Columbus, a little, little bit of different competition. But, yes, I, I totally agree. I think they 100% have a chance to get back there and, and have a good shot at uh, winning the title. Final 30 seconds here at Elida High School as Shawnee is going to hold on. They're going to be your sectional champions. And they will move on to play uh, the winner of Bryan and either St. Mary's or Kenton. As that game is being, the St. Mary's Kenton game is actually being played tonight as we call this on the 17th. And then the winner of that will move on and play Bryan on the 21st before Seven, matching up against five, this Indian squad eight, on the 25th. Seven, six, the soccer run, tournament run is just underway, but with the sectional title under their belt, Shawnee has got to be feeling really good about themselves yeah, great, after, great. after tonight. All, all credit again, and a good season for Elida, but all credit to Shawnee. They came out and, and from the get-go just seemed to have that focus and fire that never let up. And, and again, good luck to them. And, and long eight days off, but hopefully they're ready here and, and the, they can uh, – here in eight days, be back at Elida for a district semifinals chance. I'd like to thank our sponsor for tonight, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. They were our scoreboard sponsor. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. 
One final time for Elida High, from Elida High School. The Shawnee Indians make the short trip over and they come away with the sectional championship as they knock off the Elida Bulldogs seven to two. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, working the cameras and gonna be back editing for us. Jacob, a great job as always. We appreciate everything you do for us. We get the easy job, we talk about it. You gotta do all the setting up and have to listen to us yap over the last couple of hours and we appreciate it. We wanna thank everybody for tuning in and we have a lot more soccer and tournament run on WSN as we move through the colder month here of October, move into November. A lot of action coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. Check out all the upcoming games on our Facebook page and um, all the action that's coming up. Brady, I appreciate you coming up. First time we had an opportunity yeah, to call yep, a game together. Yeah. I had fun. You know, not the uh, not the uh, outcome I think that the Elida faithful were hoping for, but a, a great game and a great way to get the postseason under the way for the Shawnee Indians. Right. One final time, Shawnee they're your sectional champions. They take the victory 7-2. to two. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.